Hello and welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. My name is Anna Kruijt and I'm the host for today's talk. If you are participating in the live webinar, you can submit questions or comments in the chat module of the Zoom application at any time during the presentation or ask a voice question by raising your hand once the presentation is complete. So today's speakers are Andrew Harvey and Richard Griscom. Um, as founders and main organizers of this network, they hardly need introduction, uh, but I'll say a few words anyway. Um, so Andrew is a research fellow at the Leiden University Center for Linguistics, and he's currently working on funded research titled Gorwa Hatsa and the Hansu for medical inquiries in the Tanzanian Rift Valley area. His interests include the languages of the Tanzanian Rift, their documentation and description, their formal morphosyntax, the histories and cultures of their speaker communities. Richard is a postdoc at the Leiden University Center for Linguistics, and he's currently focusing on the documentation of Hatsa, a language isolate of northern Tanzania. He specializes in the documentation of endangered languages and functional typological linguistic description with emphasis on the languages of East Africa and the development of digital fieldwork methods. Um, so please join me in welcoming Andrew and Richard as they give their uh, retrospective of the Rift Valley Network webinar series here too. Thanks, Anna, and welcome everyone to our second annual retrospective for the RVN webinar series. We started the webinar series in the early spring of 2019. And so ever since then, we've marked this time of the year as the beginning of the new year for the series. And in anticipation of Martin Mouse's keynote kicking off the third year in a couple of weeks, we'd like to use this time to reflect on the webinars from the previous 12 months and to think about our goals for the future. So today we'd like to highlight the successes of the webinar series, possibly also some aspects which we think could be improved, and we'd like to open it up for feedback. So the presentation will be somewhat shorter than a typical webinar, and afterwards uh, we'd be happy to hear from you and get your thoughts on what we could try to do differently for the third year of the series. So we have now data for two full years of webinars, and naturally we have an opportunity to compare some differences between the first year and the second year. Both year one and year two of the webinar series consisted of 21 presentations. For comparison, we've also included here the total number of videos on the RVN YouTube channel, which includes some additional videos from the Leiden East Africa Day in 2019 and the Riddles Workshop in 2020. Uh, as we did in our retrospective last year, we also provide some data from a comparable traditional academic meeting, in this case, call 2019. And as you can see, after a couple of years, we've actually accumulated enough presentations to fill an entire colloquium. In terms of the number of hours of material, you can see that the second year of the RVM webinar series alone has almost as many hours as call 2019. The second year also has slightly more hours than the first year, which indicates that the presentations and discussions were slightly longer in duration. In terms of online engagement with the material, by the end of the first year, the webinar series had about 70 hours of watch time on YouTube. Currently, the year two material has about 65 hours of watch time the year one material has continued to gain additional watch time, however, and all of the material together now has over 250 hours of watch time. Zenodo is the online repository where we archive all of the presentation recordings from the RVN webinar series. And by the end of the first year of the webinar series, we had 60 downloads from Zenodo. And currently the year two material has 48 downloads. All of the material together now has 166 downloads. In a similar fashion to last year, some languages of the area were discussed more frequently than others. And in fact, the top three languages or groups are the same as last year. So those include Iraq and Gorwa, Hadza and Datoga, followed by Sandawe, and then the Bantu languages Ihanzu, Rangi, and Bugwe. This year, we were somewhat closer to achieving gender parity than the previous year. There were a total of 17 presenters, seven of which were female and 10 of which were male. 
One area in which we can definitely improve is the number of presentations given by Tanzanian colleagues. Of those 17 presenters, only three of them were from Tanzania. The rem remaining 14 were from outside of Tanzania. We also identified some themes across all of the webinars in the second year of the series. Uh, the first theme listed here, approaching old questions with new and diverse methodologies, was reflected in the discussion of the perception of color and patterns in Sara Petrolino's presentation on cattle talk, as well as Roland Kiesling's tracking of various East African vondeverter, meaning blood. And the second theme, addressing entrenched challenges with new technologies and capabilities, this was reflected in Jeremy Coburn and Didier de Milan's presentations on Hadza phonetics, uh, as well as my own presentation on community-based research. The third theme listed here, questioning established givens with emerging viewpoints, was reflected in a number of talks. Hannah Gibson, in her presentation on Rangi word order, questioned whether Rangi was truly as linguistically unique as it was thought to be. And Friederica Luca questioned whether languages should even be the objects of our study. We additionally observed discussion of research methodology, as in Alice Mitchell's presentation on sociolinguistic language documentation and the interpretation of data, as in Martin Mouse's presentation on reconstructing the history of Rangi and Mbugwe. One of the most common themes we observed was the exploration of East African history through the lens of its present day languages. For example, Mani Lusikelo discussed historical contact as exhibited in loanwords in Hadza. Finally, presenters also discussed challenges in bringing the latest advances in linguistic research methods to the study of East African languages, especially as conducted by speakers themselves, as in the case of Festo Masani's discussion of collecting Gorwa riddles within his own community. Throughout the webinars, there were also hints of some larger unspoken issues which we face as researchers. The first of these is the balance between, on the one hand, utilizing a common set of analytical concepts or categories, and on the other hand, utilizing unique concepts or categories specific to the situation at hand. So here we're thinking of commonly used terms such as uh, hunter-gatherer or forager, which is used to assign a single subsistence mode to an entire population, or even something like basic word order, which indicates that uh, within a given language, a particular word order sequence is more frequent than others, regardless of the grammatical or pragmatic context. Another significant issue, which is particularly problematic for historical and comparative research, is the lack of sufficient data or access to it. While some languages or varieties have received a moderate level of attention, others remain almost completely undocumented. And until those gaps are filled, we're forced to either make our best guess or set our research questions aside until a later time when more data is available. Finally, the role of community involvement in linguistics research continues to evolve, perhaps even as the funding models which we rely on uh, often serve as a reflection of the past rather than the future. So how do we expand community involvement when resources are finite? All right, I'll now hand it over to Andrew. Thanks, Richard. Um, another prism through which to view this year's webinar series is the Rift Valley Network mission. This short aspirational statement has been kicking around for a year or so and attempts to articulate what the RVN is and what it hopes to become. And we've highlighted some key terms here in an attempt to see in what ways our webinar series um, reflects or responds to what we want to be. Uh, I'll be the first to admit that this was a rather crude exercise, um, which yielded results which might be considered uh, equally unrefined. However, there are valuable patterns whose examination may be salutary. And Richard, you can advance uh, the slides by probably two or three there. Just one more. And maybe one more. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, so at present, the majority of the RVN is made up of linguists and the majority of talks were about languages. So naturally, most of our talks did a good job of addressing the nature 
of communication. Um, talks responding to this aspect of the network included uh, those that addressed uh, the acoustic phonetics of uh, Rift Valley languages, such as work by Didier de Malin, and those which considered common or salient features like clitic complexes in a typological perspective, such as uh, the presentation by uh, Martin Maus, um, or those dedicated to the elucidation of a particular feature of a particular language like this work by uh, Lizzie Poole. Uh, similar to this, the manifold layers of contact uh, manifest in the languages of the Rift mean that any sort of detailed linguistic analysis eventually turns to contact and to shared histories. Uh, talks like Hannah Gibson's looking at specific salient features of Rangi and asking questions about their origins, Amani Lusakello's examination of plant names and, and their possible origins in Hadza, and Richard Griscom's talk on Omayo are particularly strong examples. Uh, talks on the African past also figured, including those with a historical linguistics methodological approach, such as uh, Martin Mouse's examination of the history of Rangi Mbugwe and Roland Kiesling's wide ranging treatment of the lexical history of blood. We've also had an insightful presentation from archeologist Matthew Nisley, whose perspective and training really shed a very different light on the area we study and, and one that we hope to include more prominently in future talks. Um, and as was mentioned before, many of our talks, most of our talks were given by outsider researchers, that is individuals who do not come from the speech community they work with. Um, an exception was Gorba speech community member Festo Masani's talk on Gorba riddles, full of fascinating insight and lived experience. And again, we hope to provide further opportunities for this type of presentation in the future. Some talks also very directly addressed uh, common existing narratives, questioning their usefulness or challenging how they're understood. Um, so as Matthew Nisley's talk gave us a moment to think about the received wisdom on hunter-gatherer click-speaking peoples, both uh, Friederike Lupka's and uh, Alice Mitchell's talks compel us to reevaluate what linguists actually study and uh, how they go about studying it. And finally, we hope that the Rift Valley Network uh, can be a conduit for building solidarity and shared agency be between outside researchers and community members. I think both Richard Griscom's honest account of community-based research with Hadza and Ihanzu speaking communities, as well as Friederika's assessment of the value of conviviality, both between researchers of differing theoretical stances and between researchers and local community members are good examples of the work being done, as well as the work which remains to be done. And it's at this point in the talk that I'd like to thank all of our presenters, hosts, and webinar attendees over the past year. Uh, the, ex the expectations with which we started this series two years ago have really sort of been far exceeded. Indeed, these fortnightly talks have become an exciting and transformative venue for work related to the Rift Valley area. And personally, uh, they're a real highlight of my week and have really made me feel part of a larger community, something I think needed now perhaps more than ever before. So thank you all for your intellectual labor, time and companionship. And we would like now to finish our presentation and perhaps differently to other talks, now pose a question to you, our attendees. How would you like to see the Rift Valley Network webinar series change and improve over the next year? What have you found most useful over the past year? What are perspectives, topics, or formats we can include or include more of? As organizers, uh, we're still very much improving and we want now to give you the chance to shape where we take this in the future. So uh, on behalf of Richard and I, uh, thank you again, uh, all of you presenters and uh, audience members. And uh, yes, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, a chat. All right, thanks, Andrew. I think we'll, we'll just uh, wait for the slideshow to end and then uh, we can begin the discussion. I just wanted uh, to give a chance to highlight each of the talks uh, from this past year of the webinar series. 
Thank you very much for your presentation, Richard and Andrew. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that recordings of all of the presentation in the Rift Valley webinar series can be found on the Rift Valley Network YouTube page, and entries for each presentation are added to the Rift Valley bibliography. Looking ahead, the next webinar will be on Wednesday, 7th of April, uh, and will be presented by Martin Maus um, with the year free keynote, uh, which is titled Cultural Research in the Tanzanian Rift Valley Memories, Methods, Motivations, and Materials. Uh, I'd like to thank Richard and Andrew again for the presentation, of course, everyone else for participating today, and I hope to see you again at our next webinar.